This is Judith Lay saying Moramai as the island's Christian community is once again at your service. Manx Radio. Good morning and welcome. Well, did you enjoy your pancakes last Tuesday? They're traditionally eaten on Shrove Tuesday and the following day is Ash Wednesday, the start of the season that the Christian Church calls Lent. Six weeks of preparation for the celebration of the great feast of Easter. But what does it all really mean for us today? In a few moments, we'll listen to Russ Bravo and Patrick Woodward, who believe that these next weeks are in fact a positive and helpful time, asking God's forgiveness for what we know we could have done better, a theme that's strongly expressed in our first hymn today. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways.
Wallingford Parish Church Choir from Oxfordshire and Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Lent was something that started really in the early church uh, and, and went on from there. It was the time, the final time of preparation before people were baptised at Easter. And so just as Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness where he was fasting and tempted uh, before he started his ministry, the idea was that the people who were preparing to become Christians, to be baptised at Easter, spent the final 40 days in their idea of, of giving things up, their, their desert, if you like. So there was that. There was also uh, in the early church the time when people had been uh, cast out of the the, the communion uh, excommunicated if you like because of sin or because of what they'd done or whatever uh, and this was their final time of, of being making reparation for those sins before they came back at Easter and it was a big jolly uh, and everybody had a fantastic uh, time there. Right. So Shrove Tuesday and Ash Wednesday. Oh yes. Uh, explain those. The pancakes, that's what everyone probably re- remembers, pancakes. Day, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shrove Tuesday is the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday and it's a time Shrove uh, meaning shrive to, to get rid of sins, to, to repent mm-hmm. It was also a time when the day before uh, Lent started, of course, you cleared out your cupboards of all the rich fare that you had left, and what better to make than pancakes. So you fried up your pancakes and you had a big feast before the austerity of Lent kicked in, because, of course, Lent starts on Ash Wednesday, and that 40-day period where people traditionally gave things up. And on on Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent, you were marked with the sign of the cross in ash on your forehead. And it still happens a lot uh, in the Orthodox tradition, the Roman Catholic tradition, and and, uh, a lot of the Anglican tradition traditions as well. People on Ash Wednesday will meet together. Uh, The palm crosses from the year before will have been burnt and turned into ash and the ash will be marked on the foreheads of the people uh, in church. uh, To dust you are, to dust you will return. uh, Turn away from your sins and turn to Christ. Now this all goes back right to the early days of the church. It's not something which is a throwback to like Victorian times. Oh no, 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 it's much, much further back. Yes, much, much further back than that. Right. And what about the whole idea of giving up things? Because that's what we think about, isn't it? Oh, it I'm going to yeah. give up chocolate, oh, for chocolate, Lent, you know. wine. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> what, what, where does this Be- come from? And become extra anything? grumpy for Lent. That's yeah, what it's that's all it. about. <laughs> well, uh, originally, of course, because Jesus went into the desert for forty days um, and he gave up uh, a lot of things for, for forty days. In particular, it says he, he fasted, didn't eat, didn't drink for forty days. So the idea was that Jesus gave things up for this period of time. Lent is an echo of that, therefore we give things up that are getting in the way of our discipleship, of our following God. So traditionally, Lent has been a time for for giving things up. It's also a time for taking things on, though, as well. Uh, And sometimes, uh, you know, in one sense, it's quite easy to give up tea or coffee and just be grumpy for the whole of Lent or have caffeine withdrawal symptoms. But what about taking something on? What about going to a Lent group? What about reading a particular book? What about praying? Praying for somebody particularly, something that you actually take on during the period of Lent. Because one of the things that Lent is about, it's about spring cleaning our lives and it's asking whether the patterns that we're setting, how we're loving, how we're using our money, how we're using our time and our talents, are those are we doing that in the way that God wants us to do it? And if and if we need to give things up, maybe we do, but also maybe we need to take things on. Is Lent a miserable time? It's not a miserable time, it's a sombre time, and I think there's a difference, isn't there? It's not a joyless time, uh, but it may be a serious time. It's not a time for self-flagellation and self-recrimination, but it's a time for repentance and a time for penitence. And it's a time for getting ourselves straight with God. This idea of spring cleaning is quite a helpful one. Spring cleaning can be a lot of hard work and it can be a bit of a sweat, but hey, do you feel better when you've done it? Mm. Uh, And so with our lives, we need a chance to spring clean our lives lives for God. Thank you, Russ Bravo and Patrick Woodward. Russ mentioned that Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness. But why? And what has this to say to us today? Well, until Jesus was about 30, he lived in obscurity with his family in Nazareth. Then he left home to spend the next couple of years walking from town to town, teaching, sharing his message of a new, different life, healing the sick and drawing followers to him. Those years were to end with his death on a cross and his rising from the dead, the events that we celebrate at Easter. But before he did anything, he spent 40 days in the wilderness, fasting and praying and reflecting on what God, his Father, had sent him to do. So, if Lent is going to have any value for us today, then we too must use it as a time, as Russ and Patrick suggest, to spring clean our lives, and perhaps our attitudes, to become better informed and to think more deeply about our world and our place in it. 
When the price is my comfort, let me love as you loved. This would normally be the time of year when Paul Moores, regional manager of the Leprosy Mission, would be here on the island, preaching at church services, meeting the many local supporters of the Manx branch of the Leprosy Mission, a charity in its own right, and, of course, organising that very popular annual quiz night at the Promenade Methodist Church. Well, the quiz night is going ahead, but with Paul on the big screen, not in person, and I'll tell you all about that towards the end of the programme. During Lent, many people make an extra effort to save a little money and donate it to charity. The Leprosy Mission have just launched their unconditional appeal, and they're hoping that during Lent we might choose to support it, and by so doing, transform the lives of people affected by leprosy, rejected by their communities, crippled by disease, and unloved. Unconditional is reaching out to the people of Mozambique. Already one of the poorest countries in the world, Mozambique has been devastated in recent years by cyclones, floods, political unrest and disease. In these conditions, it's the people affected by leprosy who suffer the most. It's a disease of poverty, and whilst the multidrug therapy, which is so helpful in controlling the disease, is available free, the big difficulty is overcoming the stigma of leprosy, still regarded by many as a curse or a judgment, and getting people to recognise early symptoms and come forward to receive life-changing treatment. The Leprosy Mission is also committed to setting up treatment hubs staffed by well-trained local people. The Leprosy Mission is committed to showing unconditional love. Our Bible reading this morning is brought to us by Alicia O'Sullivan, who is the Executive Office Coordinator at the Leprosy Mission. 1 John 4, verses 7 to 19. God's love and ours. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love amongst us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love made complete in us. We know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the saviour of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. 
God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete amongst us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. reading, we hear the words, we love because God first loved us. And God's love for us is unconditional. It's there for every single one of us, whoever and wherever we are. And so in our turn, we are called to love each other in exactly the same non-judgmental, unconditional way. Let's listen now to Paul Moores of the Leprosy Mission as he shares his thoughts on unconditional love in action. Now that is what motivates Gabriel. He is a specially trained community health worker. Every day he travels for miles on his motorbike on the red dirt tracks of Mozambique in the baking heat to reach people in the most remote parts of Cabo Delgado. That is the region of Mozambique where we work most closely. See, a woman who has experienced rescue herself after a long and challenging wait. Her name is Zaina. She's a strong, confident woman from the village of Namachu in Cabo Delgado. She's a widow with five children and 13 grandchildren. Zaina first noticed discoloured patches on her skin nearly 30 years ago when she was just a young mum. People in her village would laugh at her. But one day her life was turned around. By God's grace, a man found her, had compassion for her and helped to build a hut for shelter from the rain. Later, that same man took her to a health post where she received the cure for leprosy. Now, meanwhile, leprosy change makers, people trained by the leprosy mission, went to this same village to teach the villagers about leprosy and how it is easily cured. Now, Zaina had been trained as a leprosy change maker herself, and now she is making a difference too. She is passionate about finding those with leprosy who are hidden away and afraid so that they can experience this new life, no matter how long it's taken. So no matter how far, no matter how long, no matter what needs the touch of God, the Lord is there. The power of God's unconditional love can change any life, no matter what needs to happen to bring that change about. Our unconditional campaign this year is a picture of God's redemptive healing reaching across the whole Mozambique region of Cabo Delgado. We are looking to build hubs that can affect communities, hubs of hope, hubs where there will be help and where the the restoration of God can be felt. Just like in the village of Namachu, where the hub there now is the beating heart of that community. It's a safe space where every villager can be welcomed unconditionally. A place where those who can't read or write can learn about leprosy through drama, through song, and through dance. This is unconditional. In launching their unconditional appeal, the Leprosy Mission have a new helper. Hello, I'm Darcy Bustle, and I'm proud to be supporting the Leprosy Mission's unconditional appeal. I first met people living with leprosy three years ago, whilst on a trip with my family in Mozambique. It was shocking to discover so many cases of leprosy hidden away in remote rural areas. 
but I was struck by the love, grit and determination of those working to find and treat people affected by it. People like Zaina. She knows from personal experience just how devastating leprosy can be. Zaina was a young mother when she first noticed discolored patches on her skin. She didn't know what they were, but when neighbors recognized the signs of leprosy, they banished her to the forest and took away her three-year-old son. Thanks to the unconditional efforts of leprosy mission staff, Zaina was found, treated and cured. Today, she is a leader of her community, helping to find and welcome home other people affected by leprosy. Anyone who needs help comes to me, and the people who once banished me now come and participate in our meetings. We are changing people's attitudes. I am so happy. I wish I could take my heart out and show everyone how happy it is. Zaina is just one member of a large community of leprosy changemakers, made up of health workers, public speakers and volunteers, all determined to make leprosy a thing of the past. In the far north of Mozambique, Gabriel, a health worker trained by the leprosy mission, has been on the road for three hours. He's heard from local villagers about a young woman who is showing early signs of leprosy. If he finds someone with symptoms, he undertakes a thorough assessment, checking for patches, loss of feeling, and inflamed nerves. People often worry about what will happen to them if leprosy is confirmed. So Gabriel is ready to offer help and advice. Often, when a patient first receives the diagnosis, they feel frightened, dejected, and need supporting. We have to prepare them because the treatment is long. We also talk to the community. We invite them to a place, a community hub, where we give lectures about leprosy and stigma to reassure people. The Leprosy Mission is helping communities to build hubs across Mozambique. These are places of hope where people affected by leprosy are welcomed unconditionally. A place where they can meet without fear of stigma or rejection and receive the care and treatment they need. But a hub is much more than a place where leprosy is cured. It is the beating heart of village life. A safe space where everyone is welcome where health camps are held and where communities learn about leprosy through song, dance and drama. Please, will you help build more community hubs by giving a gift to the unconditional appeal and become a leprosy changemaker too. When you become a leprosy changemaker, you'll help find people affected by the disease, no matter where they are, and get them the urgent medical treatment they need. And if you give before the 24th of April, your donation will be doubled by the UK government at no extra cost to you, meaning your gift will change twice as many people's lives. Please join our community of leprosy changemakers and help make this ancient disease a thing of the past in Mozambique. Together with your help, we will stop at nothing to prevent leprosy and end the disability and prejudice it causes. That is unconditional. Thank you. Thank you, Darcy Bustle and Paul Moores. And there are leaflets about the unconditional appeal by the Leprosy Mission in all our churches and lots of information about it on social media. Just go to facebook.com and search for The Leprosy Mission Isle of Man for news and information about our local Leprosy Mission charity. Two churches are having special services for Leprosy Mission Sunday today, where a video from Paul Moores and Darcy Bustle will be shown. They're Port Erin Methodist Church this morning at half past ten and St Andrew's United Reform Church on Glen Crutchery Road here in Douglas. Their special service is this morning at eleven o'clock.
There'll also be a coffee morning in support of the work of the Leprosy Mission on Tuesday the 23rd from 10 till half past 11 in Port Erin Methodist Church. And probably the most important news, the Leprosy Mission's annual giant quiz night is on. At the usual venue, the Promenade Methodist Church, this coming Friday the 26th of February at half past seven. Ten rounds of fun and challenging questions, a delicious free hot pot meal with a vegetarian option and the evening will be hosted at the Prom Church by the Leprosy Mission Local Isle of Man trustee team with Paul Moores as Quizmaster on the big screen. For catering purposes, you do need to book your places, so email paulm, P-A-U-L-M, at T-L-M-E-W dot org. Dot UK. Admission is free, but there will be an offering taken on the night towards that Mozambique campaign. I'm always pleased when I have the chance to play one of your favourite hymns. Let me know if there's a hymn or piece of sacred music that has special meaning for you, and it'll be my pleasure to include it in a future programme. Email me, judithlay at manxradio.com, or write to me here at Manx Radio, P.O. Box 1368, Douglas IM 991SW. And you can use those same contact details to give me your church news for our notice board. Lent is the time for the very popular Lenten lunches, simple food at reasonable prices, raising money for good causes. These are the ones I know about, and of course they may be subject to postponement in the present situation. If you have access to Facebook, Paul Aldridge has done a great job, again, making a page for Lent Lunches. Go to facebook.com and search for Isle of Man Lent Lunches. But at the moment, these are the ones I believe will be open this coming week. At the Cool Chapel in Braddon, simple Lent Lunches are served in the Hall at the Cool each Thursday. Lunch is served from noon to half past one and the cost is £7. Proceeds will benefit the Tear Fund Lent Appeal and motivate addiction services. St Thomas's Church in Finch Road here in Douglas will be serving Lent lunches every Friday at noon. There's a suggested minimum donation of £6 per meal and all proceeds will be shared equally between St Thomas's and Bridge the Gap, the facility at Nobles Hospital that helps young people who are undergoing extended periods of hospital treatment. There's going to be a Lent lunch in Coolnitshiba in Andreas tomorrow, Monday the 22nd, from noon until a quarter to two. More churches will be starting to serve their lunches next week, and I'll tell you all about those on next Sunday's notice board. The very popular community events in Port St Mary Methodist Church continue this week with another Tabor on Thursday evening. This week, it's Pause for Therapy, learning about the great work done by therapy dogs and their owners. That's this Thursday the 25th in Port St Mary Methodist Church, starting at half past seven. There'll be light refreshments and the cost is £5 per person. The Mariners' Choir service, due to take place tonight in the Abbey Church in Balasala, has been cancelled as a precautionary measure due to the current situation. I'll let you know as soon as I have any more information about future Mariners' services. And looking forward to next Sunday, Abbeyland's Chapel have managed to rearrange their plough service that was scheduled for January. It's now going to be at 3 o'clock next Sunday, the 28th of February, and it'll be led by Mrs Pauline Corlett from Onken. There'll be refreshments afterwards and, as always, a warm welcome for all. All our church-related activities get another little mention on sundown each Sunday night. And speaking of sundown, I'll be back tonight at nine to share a selection of easy listening music to round off your weekend. But for now, this is Judith with a prayer that you and those you care about can, in these uncertain times, rest in the sure knowledge that we are all held, united and secure in the Father's love. Thank you for listening. I wish you a very good morning. The Nation Station makes rain.